got about three hours left. So <laughs> uh, I, love how, I love how Disney talks about um, buffets because they don't say all you can eat. They say all you care to enjoy um, as if somehow that makes us feel better. <laughs> um, but today, today's a little bit different day for us. So if you're new to our church, we don't usually um, go, go in like we're going in today. But this is kind of an all you care to enjoy moment for us. Where we're really seizing the moment to walk in some peace and worship together. And um, I had no idea my dad was going to do that. And so I was just telling him on the side, just I'm always blown away at his heart and the way he leads his church and their generosity. And it's just like, man. How great is this? How great is it to be a part of this church, you know? So can you honor just our leaders, Pastor Keith and Sheila, for their heart? I mean, you can, you can be seated. I know some of you in this room, you're new and you're like, what in the world? Um, you have kind of come to our house and, and we've had a really special family day today. And uh, this doesn't happen all the time, but man, it's just a real deal. You know, we're humans and we're trying to figure it out, but we're just gonna do what we can. And um, so I'm just taking it in right now. So I think before we, before I just jump in here, I wanna like, it's important that we pray. <laughs> um, the Bible says in the, in the message version, it says, enter God's presence with the password, thank you. And, and I just want to start this, this moment by, by just praying. And God, we just ask today that you would just, you know, you know where each one of us are at. You know our story. Um, you know what you're doing in us and through us. And God, for whatever it is that we can be grateful for right now, we're grateful yeah. for what it is that you're doing. And, and we thank you for a great future that you have for each one of us and for our families. And I pray today that more than anything that's said from a platform or communicated or anything like that, I thank you that you can speak directly to our hearts and directly to our spirit and a word from you can change our life. And I pray even if it's about nothing that's said today, it's just about something that you speak to us. Um, I pray that you would change us in, in a significant way. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so we're, what's that? Thanks, Dad. So, um, <laughs> thanks, Keela. Uh, so we're talking about the missing piece. It's, we're starting this series today, and we're talking about peace. This thing called peace is really elusive. Uh, like we're all trying to find it. I think there's a lot of conversations about inner peace, and there's a lot of things we're trying to discover. Peace is something that we are all looking for regardless of our race, our background, our socioeconomic status, our, what our family looks like, what the makeup of all these different things in our life are. We're looking for peace. We're trying to figure it out, and we feel like it's something that, that is missing. And so what I want to talk about today is just what is peace and where do I find it? So we got we to talk about what it is, and then we got to talk about where it is that we're going to that we're gonna find peace. And uh, so I really love this. This is my second Disney reference today. So um, this is from the Haunted Mansion, a ride that's at Disney World. And uh, this isn't a real person's tombstone, although if your name's Fred and a rock falls on your head, this might be a good way to go. So um, you know what I'm saying, not a good way to go, but like a good way to do a tombstone if you, if you wanted one. So, so, I want to point out this part that we, we've in, in culture, we use this term rest in peace when we talk about dead people and people that have passed away. And it's really interesting to me because sometimes I feel like that's the, that's the place that we feel like we're finally going to find peace. Like I'm going to be able to rest when I'm dead and stuff's not going to be as hard as it's been anymore. And uh, it's just that we don't feel rested when we're in, in life. You know, for me, I grew up, you know, I care but I'm also a pretty introverted person. So the thing about being introverted is you mostly care about yourself. Um, it just is what it is, you know. I'm letting you into the, to the introvert thing a little bit, just about being introverted. The thing about introverts is they like like people, but not that much. And um, extroverts are wonderful because they really do care about other people. So when I got married, all of a sudden I, I met this person that I was like, I really cared about. And I really cared about, I really care, I don't care. I didn't care then and don't care now, I care. Just overall, I care about Courtney. I did not, not that I cared about her and then I don't anymore, <laughs> but I care about her presently, five years later and also five years ago when we got married. So 
<laughs> so anyway, when we got married, uh, all of a sudden this person came into my world that I deeply care for. And, and there, there's just all this anxiety that, that was created in me that I'd never felt before. I never like felt anxiety in my life. And then I got married and before we got married, there was like this weird thing that with Courtney's health that she was going through where her, her white blood cell count was really elevated. And so doctors doing all these blood tests, they were looking at that. And I was thinking, man, like I'm not in control. She's not in control of what her white blood cell count looks like. And that was a lot. And then we had Charlie and um, Tommy and Rachel have four kids and I have one kid and I don't even know the anxiety that they would feel because one kid is like, you know, can I say nightmare? <laughs> Hard struggle. I don't know. I'm sorry. Maybe that shows my lack of maturity that one kid is like wearing me out in life right now. People are, people are looking at me every day going, are you, are you okay? Did you sleep last night? Are you tired? You look really tired, which is the best compliment you could ever give somebody, by the way, right? Because people, people walk up to me all the time. I don't know if they do this with you. They just go, hey, like, you, you look really tired. Like, I felt good until you, until you said, I mean, I'm not tired. I slept like 11 hours last night. I don't know. I, not last night, but you know what I'm saying. So... So all of a sudden I have Charlie and I remember when she was six months old, she had her first ear infection. And uh, so we go to the doctor. I'm like, okay, we gotta go to the doctor. She's, uh, maybe she has, I don't know. We felt like it was maybe ear infection. I don't know. They, they, they don't tell you like six months, they don't like communicate well. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, we go to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh, they have an ear infection. We're gonna start her on antibiotics. And I'm like, antibiotics, no way, no way. Have you heard of antibiotic resistance? Like you could, there's gonna be a super bug someday and then antibiotics, they, they won't work anymore. So we can't give her antibiotics at six months old. We have to do something else. And the doctor just looked at me and said, well, this is the only thing that, you know, we really have for her to, uh, her to do is antibiotics. And, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Not only are we trying to solve an ear infection that's stressing me out, but at the same time, it's like antibiotic resistance becomes this thought process in my mind that I've never thought of before. Things like antibiotic resistance. And so that kind of stuff. Then, then with, uh, this is toddler stuff, right? So I've never, I've never spent so much time in my life talking about, uh, bathroom stuff, right? So like, what is the quality of this child's bathroom time experience, you know, in, in proper, not to be crass or anything, but like we use the word BMs, right? So we talk about constipation a whole bunch. And then, and then when you Google constipation, it's like they could have a blockage. You might need to rush them to the hospital. So I'm just taking you on my own little like lack of peace journey that I've been on my life. I don't know. Some of these things may seem little to you and I totally understand that. All I'm saying is that all of us have a tendency to feel a lack of peace and feel a whole bunch of anxiety about stuff. Uh, even though it sounds silly, I'm just, I'm just telling you where I'm at. So, <laughs> so, so the Bible says in, in, in Psalm, uh, I lost my remote. And the Bible, the Bible says in Psalm 34, 14, it says, turn away from evil and do good, search for peace and work to maintain it. Um, that's a really interesting verse and I, I want to get into that, but I want to just start, right? What is peace and where do we find it? First question we have to ask is what is peace? What does it mean to have peace? So there's, there's, there's three, there's an English word, but then there's two, two different words the, that the Bible uses to describe peace. One is a Hebrew word called shalom and the other is a Greek word, arene. And um, those two things coming together, peace is calmness, contentment, quietness, confidence, wholeness, and every kind of good, um, which is so great, like awesome. But the thing about peace is like peace really represents biblically in scripture. It represents not having any missing pieces, not, not really being, being, being broken, just the overall sense of wholeness. And what, what that means though is not a lack of external conflict, but a lack of internal chaos. So a lot of us were looking for peace and we think that peace is a lack of conflict. So once we get to the point in our families, in our marriage, in my job, whatever it is that I'm looking for, once I get to the point where I don't have conflict, then that is peace. That is what peace is. If, if you look at the actual definition, there's not anything here about conflict or lack thereof. And so peace is very much about the inner state more than like the external state. 
because all of us are at a different place. Some of us are in very difficult seasons of our life right now. Some of us are in okay seasons. And even when we're talking about silly things like children's ear infections, that's really not that big of a deal, right? It's what kids experience. That can cause a ma major internal chaos for some of us, especially for new parents. Like I'm trying hard not to be a helicopter parent. I might be like a drone parent though. Like a, <laughs> just like float, you know. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to navigate my own, my own sense of that because I can tend to have so much internal chaos about my family and about people that I really do care about and about a lot of things that I can't control. And so what we do is we look to peace and we think that peace, right, is a lack of conflict. And so uh, in addition to that, harmony is not peace and peace is not always harmonic. So we think too, not only is a lack of external conflict peace, but harmony is peace. When everybody's getting along, this is when we're peaceful. Whenever everyone's happy and our kids aren't fighting and, you know, everything's going good at my job and no one's mad at me, that's, that's whenever there's peace. And that's not what peace is. Peace is not harmony. Peace is not everybody holding hands and singing songs. It's, it's, it's not about harmony. Harmony is great. Harmony is a great thing for us to look for. A lot of us base our happiness in how har harmonic our lives are, like if we don't have this external conflict that happens in our life. But when we're talking about peace, about peace being missing in our life, that really has nothing to do with harmony. So peace is not no pain. Everyone agrees and no one's unhappy. It's not what peace is about. What peace is about is peace is a sense of calm that emanates from a confidence that God is telling a good story through my life. Yeah. Ultimately, this is what the peace of Jesus is. This is what the peace is. This is the stuff that we're searching for, that we're trying to figure out. So what is peace? Peace is a calmness inside of me that emanates from a confidence that God's telling a good story. Do you believe that God's telling a good story through your life? I'm not asking you to answer that question right now. I'm just saying in, in general. You think it's going to work out? You believe that? You have confidence in that? Most of us probably don't. We have a lot of reasons why in different situations, like we look at our relationships and we think, oh, in that friendship, that's probably not gonna work out. Or with my kids or, you know, I go there. I, and I'm saying that as a person that does go there. I, you know, people use this thing like, hey, you should hope for the best and, and prepare for the worst, which is just the stupidest thing to ever say. It's just dumb and it doesn't work. It just makes you feel more anxiety. I'm sorry if you say that, you shouldn't operate that way. <laughs> we should not expect the worst stuff to happen to us and hope for the best. I understand planning. Some of you are like, oh, are you saying I don't go through life with a plan? No, don't be weird about it. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, let's be people that believe that the future is going to be better than right now. So what is peace? What is peace? Confidence that God's telling a good story. If I don't have confidence that God's telling a good story, I don't have peace. So where do I find it? So we got, we got what is peace? Where do I find it? Um, ask yourself this question. And I shouldn't you ask yourself this question just right now in this, in this moment, in your mind. What gives you peace? What is it that in your life you feel like, hey, I'm at peace whenever this is this way? When your job's a certain way, when your marriage is a certain way, uh, when your finances look a certain way. Christmas is awful for all of us every year. I get nervous around Christmas about my finances, not because I'm unwise, but because everyone needs a gift. And... <laughs> Then there's this whole thing of like taxes that you have to pay at the end of the year. I didn't even know that was a thing until I was an adult. It's like all this stuff just like out. I have a total lack of peace during the most peace on earth season, right? <laughs> and they don't have layaway anymore. <laughs> some, some places do, I know. Amazon doesn't do it. <laughs> so so here's, here's what happens in our life. I don't know if you've ever done this. I never have, but I had this thought that it's kind of like if you have a jigsaw puzzle and you have missing pieces and you try to like make your own little jank piece to fit into the missing piece. Um, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out what is it that gives us peace because we think, okay, if I do another vacation or if I take some time off, you know, I feel burnt out, all these different things, then that's going to give me peace. In Isaiah, in the, in the book of Isaiah, the Bible describes Jesus and it says, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So we're trying to create peace. We understand what it is. I, I get that. 
We're trying to create it though. We take vacations, days off. We cut certain people out of our lives. We change jobs, change this and that. We're going to counseling, we're going to therapy, and we're trying to find this elusive thing called peace, especially inner peace. John chapter 14, verse 27, these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So there's two things that happen, though, in our life. We have troubles and we have fears. We have worries and we have fears. And so troubles and fears will always lead to a lack of peace. What troubles you right now? What are you discouraged about? What are you worrying about? Some of us are worried all the time. We wouldn't even know, we wouldn't even know like, we wouldn't know what to do if we weren't worrying about something. So we worry about not worrying. Like, I'm not worrying right now, so I'm probably sure there's something in the future that I'm going to be worried about. Some of us live our lives and we have really great seasons or moments with our family and we like have this thing in the back of our hat, uh, the back of our head of foreboding doom, thinking that, okay, at some point the other foot's going to drop and something really bad is going to happen because this season is too good right now. Like we're worrying about the fact that we don't have anything to worry about. And we're worrying about stuff that we can't even control anyway. Pastor Keith talked about Matthew 6. It says, it says who of you, Jesus said, who of you by worrying can add one second to your life? So even if there's something to worry about right now, we all know what good does that do? And this is stuff you and I say to people like, hey, chill, it's good, it's gonna be fine, don't worry about it. Then, then we're the ones that worry a lot. Then we have fears. What are you afraid of? Most of us are afraid of the future. Future doesn't even exist yet, yeah. hasn't even happened. All the stuff we're afraid of is not today, right? So if you've gotten a diagnosis, you're not afraid of the diagnosis because it's already happened, you're afraid of how the diagnosis is gonna play out. So we're, or we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of trying. We're afraid of things not working out. We're afraid of missing out. Uh, have you noticed that everything you're afraid of hasn't actually happened yet, right? Though none of those, and, and this is the stuff my parents would say to me when I was a kid. Like, hey, don't be freaked out about it. It hadn't even happened yet. I, mostly when I was in trouble at school, I thought I was gonna get kicked out. And my parents were like, don't worry. There, there's a whole bunch of steps between, you know, you being dumb and you getting kicked out of school. <laughs> So here's what troubles and fears do. What troubles and fears do, do in our life is they create a negative alternate future. So we think in our mind, I'm worried, I'm afraid, I'm nervous, I'm freaked out, I'm whatever, I'm this, I'm that, I'm all these different things. And so in the future, my future will be bad because of my present worries and troubles that are based in, fu based in the future, not based in right, in right now. So peace is a gift, but trouble and fear is self-created. You and I can't create peace, no matter what we do. The Bible tells us that peace is a gift that God gives. Psalm 34, which I read to you just a second ago. Psalm 34 says, search for peace and seek to maintain it. Don't create it. But the Bible says you can create trouble. You can create fear. You can create a whole bunch of anxiety. You can create a whole bunch of these different kinds of things. And so if we don't have peace, it might be because our troubles and fears that we are creating are getting in the way of the thing that we can't create. So what we're creating internally is getting in the way of something that only comes through the gift that God can give us. So we live our lives with this, yeah, God mentality. Like, yeah, God, you know, I know you're going to work everything together, but this situation really sucks right now. Or you might, you might be sitting here saying, well, that, Josh, that's good when you're talking about your you know, two-year-old being constipated, but it's a whole other deal when you're living the life that I'm presently living or whatever it is that you as an individual are going through. The great thing, one of the great things for me about the scriptures and about what Jesus talks about is that it's kind of situation neutral. So he is God and he knew every, everything that we would face. He knows what we're currently facing and he still chose to say all this stuff and say, this is how it works. So Isaiah 26, verse 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you and whose thoughts are fixed on you. In the book of Judges, in Judges chapter 6, the name of God in that, in that particular book is Jehovah Shalom, which means the, na the name of God is peace. God wants, God wants to enter our lives, lives and, and bring us a sense of peace. So what is peace and where do we find it? Well, we can only find it with Jesus. And that's what he said. John 14, I just read it. 
Peace is, peace is a gift that I can give, so don't be troubled and, and don't be afraid. Well, the trouble and afraid piece is our job. Jesus himself stepped into human history. This is the, one of the purposes that Jesus had when he came into the history of the world to be the peace that we need. Our peace was never meant to come from an external circumstance or an external source or someone else. And some of us, we look at our marriage, we look at our family, we look at our job, we look at all these different things and we think, okay, if I just can connect the dots here, like we heard Pastor Keith talk a little bit about happiness. If I can just connect the dots over here, then I will have peace and none of that will ever be the case. And God intentionally set it up that way because whether, where, I don't know where you as an individual are with God right now, but you need God in order to have peace. He intended for it to be that way. One of the things that people need the most in their life is they need peace. And the only place to get peace is in Jesus. So how do we get it, right? So yes, in Jesus, I get that, but he's not here for me to conversate with. He won't be in the lobby after this to meet with you, I'm sorry. Maybe he will, I don't know, Then it'll be a great day. <laughs> So Philippians chapter four, how do I find and keep peace? How do I find and keep it? Psalm says, seek peace and, and, and seek to maintain it. Seek out peace and seek to maintain it. How do I find peace and how do I keep peace? There's a few steps. This is one of the places that the Bible actually gives us the answer to. It's awesome. Sometimes there's so many questions that, you know, it's like the Bible doesn't answer that question. I'm sorry, I really can't help you there. But I can help you here because the Bible gives the answer. So in uh, Philippians chapter four, Bible says this, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So there's, there's four steps that I just want to give you practically. And if you walk away from, from anything that's even said today, we've said a whole bunch in this service. There's been so much talking. I've talked out and I've only been up here for 20 minutes. So there's four steps. There's four steps. Number one, you got to let go of what you can't control. I can't control Charlie's health. I can't control Courtney's health. I can't control a whole bunch of different circumstances around me. You know, here's a silly thing that I do. I don't put anything on the walls in my house. I've never had this happen. But I don't put anything on the walls in my house because I'm like, what if something happens and we just have to move out? <laughs> What's going to happen? I don't know. Something could happen, though. And we got to leave. <laughs> as far as I know, we've never had a wildfire in Frisco, Texas. You know, I don't even know if we've ever had a tornado really here. But even then, those things can be replaced. But I think that that's like legitimately a thought that I have. Like there's certain things I won't do because I'm like, OK, nothing's permanent. Nothing's ever going to last. Okay, I have to let go of stuff I can't control. I can't control that. But live as if. Do what you can control. Now, you might not be able to control your spouse, right? But you can control your behavior. Right? It's like, oh, I can't control them. I'm just going to do me. That's really not what I'm saying. <laughs> what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is just you control the things that you can control. And especially in things that give us anxiety and things that are so big, Right, so big in our, you think about our country or you think about the things that really concern you in your life, like health. Health is so major to all of us. What do you do? Well, then the, you, you, you talk to God about everything. And prayer is not this thing that's, you know, we're not, we're not like speaking Valyrian. We're not speaking, Valyrian's a Game of Thrones reference, I'm sorry. We're not speaking, uh, we're not speaking like, <laughs> I was gonna use the Lord of the Rings reference, but then that would be way too deep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to say elv elvish, but whatever. You guys know where I'm at. So, <laughs> so we're not, it's, prayer is not, some, some of us grew up in a context where prayer is like this really high level language activity where you got to make sure you got all the vocab words right and you look at your flashcards before you pray. That's not how, that's not how prayer, prayer works. Prayer is just like, I'm going to talk to God about everything in my life. One of the things for me, you know, nights in, in this season of my life, and I can't tell you when this started, and there wasn't like a specific kind of instance where uh, this started to happen, but um, nights, nights have become really difficult for me sometimes where I start thinking about everything that's not happening. It's probably my time of greatest personal discouragement in my life. And so when I would go to bed, it's like I would be, you know, I'd be just laying there and I'd close my eyes. And as soon as I close my eyes, it, you know, the tape starts running. And so it's like, oh my gosh. 
this, 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 this. So I tried for a while to keep like a notepad next to my bed and that didn't work. Um, just write things down. That didn't work. And so I decided, hey, I'm just going to pray. So there's nights, there's nights that I have um, still to this day where I just lay there and I just close my eyes and I pray until I fall asleep. And it's not about, I don't pray like in a weird way. I just talk to God about stuff. I'm like, God, like this thing and this thing's happening in my life right now. And I'm struggling over here and I'm dealing with this. And God, be with Charlie and be with my parents. And God, I know you're, you're working in the context of our church and you're working through people. And God, in the midst of my discouragement, I just want your encouragement. God, I just ask for your peace right now. And so like, that's what I do in those, in those moments. Talk to God about everything. There's nothing that you should not talk to God about. It's nothing that's too small, nothing that's too big. It's not just about, you know, some people, and I, when I was growing up, people would say, well, only, you should only pray according to God's will. Well, I don't know what God's will is, so I'm just going to pray about everything. I have no idea. I can't know the will of God. I know what my will is, so God, hopefully you can align those two things together. And, and wherever you need to change my heart, change my heart. Wherever you need to change my focus, change my focus. Wherever you need to, wherever you need to mess me up, mess me up. Then the third thing, tell God what you need. God wants to know the desires of your, your and my heart. You want to make a million dollars a year? Pray for that. Pray for God to open up doors for you. It's not petty. It's not silly to pray for stuff. If you want, if you want certain things to happen in your family, man, you pray for that stuff. You believe for that stuff. Tell God what you need. It didn't say, hey, like certain needs are greater than other needs. It's just needs. What do you need? Pray about it. Tell God what you need. And then the most important thing I feel like that kind of wraps everything together and puts it together is just be grateful for what you have right now. It can be better. It can be better for all of us. You know, I woke up this morning, though. I have breath in my lungs. I get to live. I have, I have a beautiful wife. I have a wonderful child. And I don't make as, money, as, as much money as I want to make. This church isn't where I feel like it should be. There's a lot of dynamics and stuff we got to navigate. But you know what? There's so much today that I can be grateful for. And as soon as, I, as, soon as in my personal life, as soon as I begin to walk in gratitude, I, just, I really do feel a sense of peace. So the, so the place I, so the place I, the place I really end every night when I'm in that, when I'm in that moment, I'm just kind of letting you into my private world a little bit here. But when I'm in that moment, the place I end is just by being thankful. The thing that gives me the, I, I'm just telling you this for, in my personal life, the thing that gives me the most peace is when I just sit there and I practice gratitude. The thing that prevents me from feeling internal chaos is when I can be thankful. That when everything's going good and then I start to have this sense of foreboding doom in the back of my head of this is going too good, the other foot's going to drop. I just go, you know what, God, I'm just going to be grateful for right now because the only moment I'm living in is this one. I'm not living in the future. I'm not living in the past. I'm just living in right now. And God, this moment is just such a gift from you. And I'm going to seize whatever good I can in this moment. And I'm just going to be so thankful for what, you're, what you've done in my life, what you're going to do in my life, but also what, just, what you're presently doing. I'm just so thankful to be in this to be in this season and, and to be in this time. So in John chapter 20, this is where I want to, this is where I want to end. So I want to pray for us, but today's, today's a little bit of a different day. And that's a good thing because sometimes we just, you, you need your pattern to be interrupted by peace today. We need that. We need the missing peace of God. And so you might've sat here, you might've heard Pastor Keith talk a minute ago. You might've sat through that worship and gone, man, that was way too long. I didn't do that. <laughs> My legs hurt. <laughs> that might have been you. Right? But <laughs> not me. But but you might you might just be like, man, like all that's good, but I don't feel I don't feel anything. I'm not I'm not experiencing anything that you're describing right now. There's a story in the Bible in John chapter 20 where Jesus had died and he'd been raised from the dead, and the disciples were just I mean, it was like all hell broke loose for them. Everyone's coming after him. People are trying to kill him. They've just killed Jesus. It's, it's just like the end. And so John chapter 20 tells us this story. It says that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. And as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Then this next part's really interesting to me. 
It said he breathed on them, which is very spiritual, but also weird. Like, imagine, hey, we're having a meeting. So when you guys have peace, I'm going to breathe right in your face right now. <laughs> Sorry, it's just how I read it, okay? If you're more spiritual than me, that's great. But he breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 says that the Holy Spirit is what gives us peace that passes all understanding. And you might be new to faith. You might not really be a Christian. And that word Holy Spirit might be weird to you. It's weird to me. I've been a Christian my whole life. But the Holy Spirit is, is meant to be the helper that comes alongside us and speaks strength into us, that encourages us, that lifts, that lifts our head up. The Holy Spirit is the only thing, the only person that can bring peace into our life. You know, what's interesting is that to me in church history and is that if you know anything about church history, you know, in the book of Acts was when the, there was the baptism of the Holy Spirit where the tongues of fire came on people's heads. And uh, I'm not going to explain that. You're just going to have to read it. But the Holy Spirit, the, like the first initial kind of experience with God is peace. So receiving, receiving the help of God in your life, receiving the help of God in our life, the first kind of vibe, the first, the first door that gets opened into that is having peace. That's what receiving the Holy Spirit, receiving the help of God, if I can use it that way, receiving the help of God, that's what it looks like, is feeling peace. Not, being, not having chaos in your life. Now, that doesn't mean your external situation is going to change today. But that means like what's in here can calm down. I can experience some tranquility. I can have confidence that God's telling a great story through me. And I just need to breathe that in. And that's, that's what I think Jesus did is he just said, hey, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening, a lot of commotion. You know, you guys have got locked doors and stuff and you're hiding and you're scared. Let's just take a beat. Let's just breathe. It's like, it's going to be good. I'm with you. Peace be still. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. That was the first thing he said. He raised from the dead. He didn't come in, guns blazing. I wrote a new chapter of the Bible. That's not what he did. He said, just peace be with you. And so as I was sent, so you're being sent. You and I have been sent into a very crazy world. It's insane. Everybody's got problems. Everyone's got drama. And so what has God called us to bring? He's called us to bring his peace. Say, hey, look, there might be a storm right now. Might be insane right now. But here's what God brings that only he can bring. The only place that we can find peace is with Jesus. The only place that we can find peace is with God. So can you bow your heads with me and close your eyes? I want to I wanna do something. I want to give you, give each one of us in this room just a minute. And don't, don't rush out of here. The Cowboys don't even play till tomorrow. Don't rush out of here because this moment is what matters because this is way more, uh, we've talked a lot today and that's wonderful, but this is way more than about what's said from the platform. It's about what God wants to do in your heart and in your spirit right now. And so you might be sitting here and you might say, you know what? I just don't really have any kind of relationship with God. And Jesus you know, me and him aren't boys and I don't follow him. He wants you to follow him. He wants to do life with you. He wants you to experience his peace. You felt the whole time you've been sitting here, you've just felt some kind of pull on yourself. Say, hey, let's go. I want you to feel this peace. I want you to experience this grace. I want you to take this journey with me. And there's a whole lot of conversations that, that you and God need to have after this, but this is the intro. This is the start. God wants you to experience this peace that when you walk out of these doors today, you have a confidence that God is telling a great story through you. So if that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to pray this prayer and repeat after me. It's a really simple prayer. Just say, dear Jesus, I accept your grace and I give you my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Now keep your heads bowed and eyes closed because I want to pray for all of us in this room because we just need to have a moment right now between us and God. I don't know where you feel a lack of peace. I don't know what's caused you to not maintain your peace, to not keep your peace. But, but we, we believe right now that God wants to minister to each one of us in this room. God wants us to release some stuff. God wants us to pray to him. God wants, to, God wants us to tell him about what we need. So God, we just ask right now in this room and in this atmosphere that we come with an expectation that you're, you're here. 
that your Holy Spirit is here. God, that you want to lead us and guide us. I thank you that your word says you give us a peace that passes all understanding. So God, I just pray that it wouldn't even be something right now that we understand or process in our rational minds. But I pray that you would just invade this place, invade our family. God, invade what we're doing in our life right now. Invade what's going on in our minds. And I pray that you would, you would end the chaos. You would end our internal strife. You would end the consternation, God. And as we put these things before you, I just pray that peace would just flood our hearts, that peace would flood our minds. God, we set you up as the Prince of Peace in our lives and in every circumstance, in every situation. In your name we pray. Amen.